Hey there, welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, registered dental assistant here at Gladwell Dental. And in today's episode, we're following you from start to finish as you scan a single unit crown prep. That's right, it's more of the Itero Scan Extravaganza. Woo! Today, I'll be scanning a number 30 crown prep, and our doctors are going to show us two different techniques for cord retraction. Sounds like a good one. Let's go. Welcome back to Itero Scanning School. I'm going to jump right into this single unit crown prep scan for this patient's tooth number 30. If this is your first time watching the Itero Element in Action, uh, take a moment and review my previous episodes where I discuss the basics of Itero function and setup to get us to this point. I'm just going to enter this patient's information quickly. I'll usually do this before my doctor actually prepares a patient so it's all ready to go when they are. Now, if you are sending this case to your own chairside mill, you'd select the chairside milling or gladwell.io in-office solution option under the case type menu. The due date for a chairside mill doesn't really apply, but it has to be entered. The menu won't allow you to actually select today's date, even if you are in fact milling right now, so I simply select the next day, or any day for that matter. The Itero will automatically suggest and highlight a two-week turnaround time unless you specify a rush case and change the due date manually. Under the Send To menu, select the lab that this will be delivered to. For today, this scan will be headed to my home base, Gladwell Dental Lab in Newport Beach, California. I'm going to give as much information as possible in this prescription portion. I'll select the tooth in question and click on the appropriate restoration. Today is a full coverage crown that has been prepared. This is going to open a new menu to enter even more specific details about this crown. My doctor is requesting a Bruxer Aesthetic Solid Zirconia Restoration. The Full Contour Zirconia tab is selected, and later I'll specify in the notes as to exactly what product is needed. So, according to my doctor's instruction, I'm entering chamfer preparation designs and then the shade that we acquired from the Uvita guide. Do you use a different shade guide? Well, that's really no problem. Click on the shade system and then select it from the drop down menu or select Other and enter it manually. If any shade information has already been entered, changing the shade system will remove the existing entries from the RX. For instance, I can select Other and then manually enter a BL2 body shade and even incisal and gingival shades if they're really necessary. Don't forget to take and enter the stump shade, especially for those restorations that aren't fused to metal copings. There is never such a thing as providing too much information. Now press that back button once all of the entries are complete and then enter any specific notes about the case in the notes section before moving forward. This is your chance to specify the exact product as well as any unique instructions that the lab needs to know. Even if this case is being sent right to your own chairside mill, enter all of these details and notes so you can refer back to them at a later time. From here, I'm going to click on the scan button on top of the screen, and I can leave the Itero in this ready position to use from this point once my doctor's preparation is done. I want to quickly review two retraction techniques that our dentists here at Gladwell Dental choose before scanning. Contrary to many rumors about digital dentistry, all other elements of the dental procedure must remain the same up to the point that the scan is taken. Tissue retraction is still a vital part of the process. For those dental assistants that are in expanded function, this applies to you as well. The first method recommended by our doctors is the dual cord technique. The initial cord is packed, preferably with a hemostatic agent impregnated into it, and then cut to exactly contour the margin, and then a second cord is placed over the first with just a little extra tail left hanging out to make it easy to remove before scanning. As a secondary retraction step, a compression cap can be placed and bitten into for a period of two to even seven minutes. Now, these caps come in a variety of sizes as well as anatomical designs that will help to hug the gingiva cleanly. After the patient has bitten on the cap for the appropriate amount of time, it can be removed and then the top cord taken out as well. Give the tooth a quick air blast to remove any debris or saliva and check once again to make sure the remaining cord does not cover the margin at all. Once the scan is complete, go ahead and remove that final cord. The next technique that our dentists are using involves a retraction paste application. A brand such as Traxident works well and has uh, built-in hemostatic qualities. The paste is applied around the margin and injected into the sulcus as much as possible. A compression cap is placed over the paste and then the patient is told to bite together with pressure for two minutes only. 
The most important part of paste retraction is the complete removal of all remaindered paste before starting the scan process. Now, you'll notice at this point that I'm taking out the lip and cheek retractor that's already been put in place. Now, this is a personal preference of mine, and you may want to experiment with scanning both ways. However, I found that if I minimize foreign objects in the mouth while scanning, my comfort level increases and the outcome is a better quality. For these posterior molars, only a quadrant scan is required, and the teeth suggested to be included in the scan are highlighted in white on this chart model. These highlighted teeth are merely suggestions. In cases where the preparation is the most posterior tooth in the arch, it will still be a good idea to capture a full arch scan just like you would while taking a physical impression. Of course, the idea here is to prevent a simulated bite collapse and poor occlusion on the final crown. I have a few selections to choose from as to where I'd like to scan first. I could begin with the opposing arch, the working quadrant, or even the actual tooth preparation. Now, even though the unit will let you start at any of these options, always, always start with the individual preparation scan and build out from there. All this work we've put into tissue retraction and hemostasis needs to be taken advantage of immediately. Click and select the tooth preparation, uh, it's colored in with blue here on this chart, and then prepare for your first scan. Now take a look at my hand position and setup before we get started. I'm holding the wand at the base with my dominant hand and my palm is towards the ceiling. I'm seated at 12 o'clock in relation to the patient and the Itero is set up at either a five o'clock or seven o'clock position. Uh, this first scan is of the tooth preparation and the preparation alone. I like to call this the five second scan. Place the wand directly over the occlusal surface of the prep and attempt in roughly five to 10 seconds, if you can, to capture all details of the tooth preparation. This includes the margins, the occlusal surface, and the axial reductions. In this scan, the moment after all of these records have been captured, don't worry about the adjacent teeth or the contacts at this point. As you take the preparation scan, a green dot will appear on the screen and attempt to locate the occlusal surface of the prep. If the dot does not automatically find the exact center of the occlusal, or incisal surface, simply press and hold the finger on the dot until it becomes mobile, and then relocate it to a more preferred position. Well, now that I'm satisfied with the preparation scan, I'm selecting the rest of the working arch and continuing. I'll usually give the quad a quick suction or an air blast before setting the wand on the occlusal surface just distal to the most posterior tooth in the arch and start the scan. I'm scanning the occlusal surfaces first and moving towards the anterior. Once I arrive at the cuspid area with more incisal edge anatomy, I'll angle the wand a little more lingually inclined instead of facing straight down on that incisal edge. Start to bring the wand back towards the posterior once you've reached the cuspid or lateral area, and then scan the lingual, making bold, twisting motions back and forth throughout the arch. Take a good look at my hand position here. I'm still using an underhand grasp with my fingers facing upwards, and I'm making exaggerated, bold, purpose-driven twisting movements in order to capture these difficult-to-reach embrasure and contact areas. Now, if you are having trouble acquiring interproximal anatomy, first check for saliva contamination, and then increase the angles of your exaggerated twisting motion. Once I reach my start point, just distal to the most posterior tooth in this arch, I'll stop the scan and reset for the buccal anatomy. Start this buccal scan on the occlusal surface first. Make the iTero work for you to first mesh your new scan with the information you've already acquired and then work your way towards the anterior to capture the new buccal data. A similar exaggerated motion also captures the buccal embrasures and the contours. This time, instead of twisting the wand, make a rocking motion with the wand almost as if you are lifting and dropping the tail end. As I make my way towards the anterior, make a note of my hand position change. This patient holds her lip just a bit more tightly to her teeth than I'd like, so I switched my hand just to hold the wand tip steadier throughout the anterior section. After a good amount of experience with the Itero element, you'll also develop your own comfortable workarounds for more difficult areas. Perfect hand position, in my opinion, is defined as your most solid, ergonomic grasp, in the moment, that acquires the highest quality data in the least amount of time with no patient discomfort. I've stopped the scan at the buccal anterior and I'll visually review the complete scan and check for any missed areas. Now as I rotate here, I can see that the distal contacts of 28 and 29 still need to be filled in. 
Now, since the Itero shoots at an incredible 6,000 frames a second, I only want to patch the missing data areas by using the fill feature. I'll press and hold my finger on the screen until a secondary menu opens, and then I'll choose the fill option. Now, the unit will take just a moment to process and suggest areas outlined in red here that may need to be filled in. Now, once I start to scan again, no matter where I aim with the wand, only the missing data areas will be added to the segment. You can see those fill in nicely by really focusing on the missing points and exaggerating the tipping or twisting techniques that I discussed with you earlier. Now, another review after filling shows all missing areas are filled in to my satisfaction. I'm not worried about any other areas marked in the red. They don't interfere with the data and are more so just scattered data from previous scans. Now, moving on to the opposing arch, in this case, the maxillary quadrant, I've selected it on the visual chart, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about acquiring the scan from this point. It's the same principle as the working quadrant scan, but without the tooth prep scan step. I'm starting distal occlusal of the most posterior tooth in the quadrant, scanning deliberately towards the cuspid area, wrapping around to the lingual, and heading back towards the molars, twisting for embrasure areas, and then stopping the scan at the start point to reset for the buckle. I'm always starting again on the previously scanned occlusal surface until the itero recognizes the segment and meshes, then wrapping around to the buckle and moving towards the anterior where I'll stop. I'm changing up that hand grip just a bit to steady the wand to counteract the patient's lip resistance. A quick review shows small areas that need to be filled. I'll once again select the fill option and give them a quick once over to complete. From here, I'm going to review all scans up to this point just to make sure everything I need is in order. I'm not worried about those red contact indicators on this prep scan because my full working quadrant scan shows that these areas are complete. Okay, let's bite these quadrants together. Click on the bite registration button in the chart and the quads will appear opposite of each other. I'll ask the patient to open, insert the wand in the vestibule, and then ask the patient to bite into cydric occlusion. I may even help to hold their bite together with a little pressure on the chin from my stabilizing hand. I'm starting posterior and facing directly at the buckle surface of the arches. This scan is taken in an S, or a zigzag pattern, moving towards the anterior until the quads mesh. Stop the scan as soon as this mesh happens and review it. Everything I see is acceptable, so I'll move right along to the post-production stage. I'm really happy here with how little time it took to clean and produce this model to review. I attribute this mostly to my ability to acquire the information in the shortest amount of time. 6,000 frames a second is a lot of information to process. As your scanning skills increase, the overall processing time will begin to decrease. Now, these color codes overlaid on the arch can be used to show the clinician the occlusal clearance and assist to make decisions about restorative materials or even refinements. Now, just by selecting different combinations of the arches, I can get a good look at every angle before sending it off to the lab or to the practices glidewell.io in-office solution for a complete in-house same-day case. Thank you for that, Will. Not a problem at all. I love sharing these tips and tricks. Your patients are going to love you for it and your lab's going to love you for it. Can't beat that. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode. So on behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Dental, thank you so much for watching. And we'll meet you right back here next time.